everyone and welcome to another video by BioTeach, this time looking at resting and action potential. This is a topic that's relevant for A-level biology and BTEC applied science level three and I had a couple of requests to cover this as soon as possible. I want to start off with resting potential first. This is when an axon is not being stimulated by an action potential. The resting potential is usually around minus 70 millivolts. When the axon is resting, the axon is said to be polarized. Potassium ions are being pumped out of the cell, and that means that the outside of the axon is more positively charged than the inside of the axon. As you can see from the image here, the resting potential of a neuron is maintained by two proteins that are found in the cell membrane, the sodium potassium pump and the potassium ion channel. While the sodium potassium pump uses active transport to move three sodium ions or Na plus ions out of the neuron for every two potassium ions or K plus ions that are moved in. The potassium ion channel uses facilitated diffusion of the potassium ions or K plus out of the neuron down their concentration gradient. As the sodium potassium pump moves sodium ions out of the neuron and the membrane is not permeable to sodium ions, this means that the sodium ions that are on the outside can't diffuse back in. And this creates an electrochemical gradient, basically a concentration gradient of ions because there are more positive sodium ions on the outside of the cell than the inside of the cell. It's really important to remember that the sodium potassium pump also moves potassium ions into the neuron. When the cell is at rest, most potassium channels in the membrane are open. This means that the membrane is permeable to potassium ions, so some will diffuse back out through the potassium ion channels as shown by stage 3. When an action potential arrives at the axon, it triggers the membrane potential of the axon to change. Action potentials occur by saltatory conduction, which basically describes the way an electrical impulse skips from node to node down the full length of an axon, speeding the arrival of the impulse at the nerve terminal in comparison with the slower continuous progression of depolarization spreading down an unmyelinated axon. The animation on the left shows you an unmyelinated neuron versus a myelinated neuron. With the unmyelinated neuron, you can see that the electrical impulse is taking a while to go down the axon as it has to travel down the entire length of that axon over to the dendrites at the end. With the myelinated neuron, you can see that it jumps in the nodes of Ronvier, and that's what speeds up the conduction. Axon myelination is a feature of vertebrate nervous systems as it enables them to achieve a very rapid speed of nerve conduction. The myelinated neurons will conduct impulses only at the nodes of Ronvier because this is where the potentials are generated and this is where the channel proteins are. The axon is insulated by the sheath and so the action potential at one node is sufficient enough to trigger an action potential at the next node and the impulse will essentially just jump along the fiber. The formation of action potentials in neurons is in one direction only. This is from the dendrites along the axon to the synapse and this is what's shown in the animation on the right hand side of the slide now. It's carried out by the opening and the closing of the voltage-gated ion channels, which basically cause a brief reversal of the resting membrane potential, and that creates an action potential. As an action potential travels down the axon, the polarity changes across the membrane, and once the signal reaches the axon terminal, it will stimulate other neurons. Now, we'll talk about the stimulation of other neurons in another video. In this animation, you can see how the charge from outside of the membrane and the inside of the membrane changes as the action potential is generated. In both A-level biology and the BTEC applied science, you need to be able to recognize the action potential graph and also be able to describe and explain what's happening at each stage in terms of ion movement and potential difference. So this is a typical graph that you, you may encounter in textbooks or exams. You can see that the potential difference at resting is minus 70. That's minus 70 millivolts. So when a stimulus is present, it has to reach and exceed the threshold level. The threshold is the minimum stimulation the neuron needs in order to generate an action potential. If the threshold is not reached, there will be no response. This is what's shown by the failed initiations on the graph on the slide. We call this the all or nothing principle. 
The all part of it says that once the threshold is reached, the action potential will always be generated to reach the maximum potential of plus 40 millivolts. This is the all part. But if it does not reach the threshold, then there is no response at all. This is the nothing part. Now, if we say that the stimulus excites the neuron cell membrane past the threshold, it causes sodium ion channels to open and the membrane becomes more permeable to sodium. So sodium ions will diffuse into the neuron down the sodium ion electrochemical gradient. This causes the inside of the neuron to become less negative, and this process is known as depolarization. As a threshold of around minus 55 has been reached and exceeded, the more sodium ions channels will open and more sodium ions will diffuse into the neuron. And this is why we see the graph increasing, going up, going more into the positive. When we get to the potential difference of plus 40 millivolts, this is the peak of the potential. At this stage, the sodium ion channels will close and the potassium channels will open. As this happens, the membrane is more permeable to potassium and so the potassium ions at stage three will move downwards and diffuse out of the neuron down the potassium ion concentration gradient. This process is known as repolarization and this restores the negative charge to the cell interior. You can see on the graph there is a refractory period which is also known as hyperpolarization. At this stage the potassium ion channels are slow to close so there is a slight overshoot where too many potassium ions will diffuse out of the neuron. The potential difference becomes more negative than the resting potential. You can see it goes way below minus 70 millivolts. During this refractory period, the nerve doesn't respond. And then the final stage of the graph is where the neuron basically reaches its resting potential. This is where the ion channels are reset. The sodium potassium pump returns to the membrane to its resting potential by pumping sodium ions out and potassium ions in. And that maintains the resting potential until the membrane is excited by another stimulus. So that's all I have for you on action potentials. If you've got any questions, please leave me a comment under this video and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you found this video useful. Bye for now.